morning. Welcome to Ainsley News. It's Tuesday, 15th of September. It's Crypto Tuesday. Today we're talking DeFi and how it's undoubtedly the future. Decentralized finance, or DeFi, aims to give users an alternative by removing the need to trust centralized parties and traditional financial institutions by opening its doors to the world. This is achieved by building digital services in an open, permissionless, and decentralized manner. By removing the intermediary and automating many functions of the traditional institutions, DeFi can provide lower costs, higher degrees of security and privacy, resist censorship, increase accessibility, and promote decision-making democracy. The ability to borrow funds, take out loans, deposit funds in a savings account, or trade complex financial products, all without asking anyone for permission, is gaining traction. Due to its degree of accessibility, DeFi is ostensibly well-suited for emerging economies and demographics with limited access to financial services, potentially giving access to credit, exchange, and investment opportunities, which would have been expensive and inefficient before. The only thing holding back DeFi currently is the over-collateralization required for borrowers to access DeFi loans, which makes it impractical for these groups, unless they are already crypto owners. Additionally, many DeFi protocols require the specific degree of knowledge to use safely, without which users can be inadvertently exposed to risks, such as losing their funds completely. Check out this next graph here. The total value in DeFi locked, currently in DeFi. Lovely steady growth until around April. And then, bam, almost up to $10 billion from a minuscule one. The structure of DeFi. DeFi refers to the financial services that are built on public blockchains, mostly the Ethereum blockchain, and based upon open protocols and decentralized application, or dApps, allowing all SPAC aspects of the platform to be automated and performed without a central authority or intermediary. Conversely, traditional finance relies on intermediaries and centralized institutions, which increases costs and stifles efficiency. Although many cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum are decentralized and have no intermediaries, the tokens themselves are not fi a financial service or platform. DeFi only refers to financial services built on programmable blockchains, with the most popular being the Ethereum blockchain, ETH token acting as the fuel for the entire system. Take a brief moment to check out this next chart and information graphic here. The challenges for DeFi are widely recognized and the development community is troubleshooting problems with better code and new forms of interoperability like atomic swaps and wrapped tokens. Audits, bug bounties, open source commitments, and a community-led approach to security concerns will also add to a new level of trust in DeFi, and governments will also begin to regulate over assets, which will be a welcomed framework for traditional investors who are obliged to stay within legal parameters. Solutions that facilitate liquidity are also imperative, a liquid market will increase the user base, providing frictionless transfer across different blockchains and their dApps. For example, in order to improve the capacity of the Ethereum network, developers are planning to introduce Ethereum 2.0. By introducing upgraded infrastructure, significant gains can be made in the speed of transactions and capacity, solving Ethereum's very apparent scalability issue. So why choose DeFi over centralized finance? There are three key areas of tradition or centralized finance that will be impacted with the growth of DeFi, payments, lending, and exchanges. This first chart here is showing payments. Take a peek here. Then we show the difference in lending. And lastly, exchanges. Remember, you can always just pause this to look closer at any one of these infographics. They clearly show the difference between traditional and I guess the future or DeFi finance. Regulation and governments have meant that the centralized finance industry excludes an enormous proportion of the world from access to financial instruments, increasing the wealth divide. DeFi has the potential to bridge the gap and disrupt traditional finance by making money, payments, and other financial services universally accessible and cheaper. This does not mean it will immediately threaten traditional institutions. Instead, DeFi is encouraging commercial financial institutions, central banks, and the crypto community to start collaborating today and build a new generation of politically and technologically resilient financial solutions. Not for just emerging economies, but also companies looking to innovate or locked out of traditional finance and developed economies. 
As globalization progresses and the business's ecosystem further shifts towards new generation business models built upon shared governance and decentralization, there will be a growing demand for solutions like DeFi, which will provide new ways, banking, trading and investing, perhaps even setting the standard for economies to climb out of the shadows. Ainsley Wealth trades two of the key DeFi facilitating cryptocurrencies, Ethereum or ETH upon which most DeFi is built and whose ETH tokens are the gas that make it work, and Chainlink or Link, which brings a trustless interface between traditional and decentralized finance. Check out Ainsley Wealth to easily securely trade uh, any of our cryptocurrency tokens, or you can also give us a call on 1-800-987-648 so that you can buy cryptocurrency with a human. We also purchase or buy back any of our cryptocurrencies over the counter. Again, you can give us a call and we can arrange that for you at your convenience. Thanks for listening to news today and we'll catch you tomorrow.